Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step 1 covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step 2 builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, Step 3 walks you through how to get the best results when entering the Arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So, if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com slash wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. Alright, let's get into today's Step 2 release. Enjoy! Hello there, Joe Fernandez here, and today I'll be going over Step 2 of 3 Steps to Gladiator as a Feral Druid. This step involves min-maxing your damage and making the most of your crowd control. First of all, it's important to know your damage rotation in order to deal as much damage at all times. Your normal rotation will look something like this. Number 1. Build combo points with Brutal Slash or Shred. If there's only one person then Shred, otherwise 2 plus targets, use Brutal Slash to get more combo points and it costs less energy. Number 2. Use Tiger's Fury and apply Rip and Rake. Number 3. Refresh Rip with Ferocious Bite. As you can see it's quite simple yet effective, with the only situational option being Brutal Slash over Shred which will happen quite often. When it comes to your burst damage however, it will be trickier and depend if you are using Blood Talents or not. With Blood Talents, your burst will look like this. Number 1. Cast Regrowth as the gates open to get Blood Talents, then use Prowl to self. Number 2. Open with Rake. Number 3. Shred to get 5 combo points. Number 4. Cast Regrowth to get Blood Talents. Number 5. Use Tiger's Fury to instantly get back into cat form. Number 6. Apply Rip then Rake. Number 7. Berserk. Number 8. Shred to get 5 combo points. And Ferocious Bite. Again, using Brutal Slash over Shred if people are stacked. There's nothing too special with your damaging abilities. The only thing that comes to mind is to remember you're playing with Ferocious Wounds, so you want to have this debuff up on your kill target and not other targets. Now, Feral Druids have a number of crowd control abilities that when used at the right time can be greatly beneficial for your team. These will be Maim, Mighty Bash, Entangling Roots and of course Cyclone. You want to use Maim offensively to land crowd control on the healer for comps like Jungle Cleave in order to initiate chain crowd control, using Maim into a full freezing trap or a fear on the enemy healer. Other than that, it can be used ideally on your kill targets as it does give damage on your main target giving you more pressure. You can also use Maim to stop important casts or big damaging abilities. Use it mostly offensively when you can, but if you need to survive big offensive cooldowns from the enemy, then use it defensively to stop casts and to peel for your team. Maim will mostly be used to lock down kill targets in order to slay them. However, Feral is incredibly mobile so you don't always need to stun for your kill target in order to maintain uptime. It's simply to lock them down or for your partners to have uptime on targets that could otherwise kite them. So Mighty Bash is another stun you have access to while on quite a big cooldown. It doesn't do damage and as such, you probably want to mainly use Bash in order to get crowd control on enemy healers to initiate chain crowd controls and grab kills. You could also use it defensively when needing to peel off pressure or certain defensive cooldowns if your team is struggling to survive. This may delay your offensive play but may be crucial for your team in order to survive and further the game. Whether you use it in defensive or offensive situations will depend on what's happening and the importance of using it. When you make offensive plays with it, you want to ensure you can slay your target so the offensive use of it is warranted. 
As for defensive play, it will come down to needing it in order to survive to be the only use, which could happen often depending on the matchup. Make sure you notice the difference when using it offensive or not in certain matchups and if it feels like it's working well, then keep doing it, otherwise change it up. Entangling roots will be used defensively to peel against melee most of the time. Simply casting it on melee whom don't have many ways to get out will stop them from getting pressure and eventually reduce it if they have no outs or dispels for your roots. This can also be effective as seen by Fuse here, rooting an enemy melee whilst their healer is in a full trap. That way you create a 1 vs 3 situation that makes it easier for your healer to live and to play aggressive, causing a lot of pressure. Even though it's used on melee commonly, did you know it's effective against ranged DPS as well? Using it on casters when they pop an offensive cooldown will make it easier for you to run out of range and line of sight them, reducing their pressure. You can also use root on healers that push in wanting to grab crowd control on your team. For instance, on priests pushing in on for fear or holy pallies for hammer of justice, rooting them can delay their use of said spells or even stop them completely from landing it. Using your roots in between the downtime when you play aggressively will make it quite annoying for the enemy team to deal with. Since you can utilize it against every class, you should make sure to use it during these times in order to reduce pressure from the enemy team, allowing you to play offensively as soon as possible. Cyclone can be effective at crowd controlling enemies, negating them much pressure, but it also negates your own pressure. That's because if multi-dotting with your bleeds, it can be much more difficult to gain pressure from it if the targets are being cloned. Due to this, it's actually quite counterproductive, losing a lot of pressure, so you only want to cyclone when needed or playing heavy crowd control comps such as Feral Mage. You can simply use this defensively most of the time, stopping the enemy target from playing the game. It can also be great in order to bait interrupts from enemy teams in order to allow your healer and mage to free cast. Fuse does this here, looking to clone the Ellie, forcing him to win Shear, which in turn allows Gex to free cast heals and not be prone to double interrupts from the enemy team. You can also use this offensively as an extended crowd control by cycloning an enemy at low health. This is ideal when the crowd control chain ends on the enemy healer and you can hold the target's health, stopping him from getting topped. Then, you can wait for diminishing crowd control to be off on the healer, landing another sheep on him again, which can easily lead to kills or an absurd amount of pressure. Here's an example of an excellent low cyclone, forcing unending resolve and blessing of protection, which Fuse sees and cyclones the warlock low, preventing him from being topped. It's super powerful using cycling with a mage as you will have two DPS targets with spammable crowd control on a different DR. This means one of you will get through with your crowd control and also means that your healer will most likely not be dealing with interrupts, having an easier time to keep your team topped. Using your crowd control in this way allows you to play aggressively and reduce pressure from the opposition. These are two things you need as a Feral Druid, maintaining aggression and reducing as much damage as possible due to being very squishy to a lot of classes. By using your crowd control and playing aggressively, you can create counter pressure quickly and increase your tankingness just by reducing their pressure, so keep on top of your crowd control as well as maximizing your damage. That's all we have on step 2 of 3 steps to Gladiator as a Feral Druid. Make sure to watch step 1 if you haven't and stay tuned for step 3. I'll see you on the next guide and don't forget to plus skill this one if it helped. Thanks for watching.